Hey everyone, this is Clutrophies, and welcome to a Roblox Titanic game this time. A game called Titanic SOS, made by Maritime Interactive. Now, I have played this game before, and it's actually incredible how much detail the developers managed to fit into it. Especially considering this is a Roblox game at heart. So, um, I think that's a good preference for the game. I will leave the link to the game if you want to play it in the description. I recommend you check it out if you are interested in the ship. And... Uh, yeah. All that said, let's go ahead and board the Titanic. And here we are. Oh. Oh dear. There we go. Alright. So, on the deck of the Titanic now, and you can already see this model is just absolutely beautiful. Oh. Oh no, there's a dead person here. No! Get back up! Ah, uh, they'll be back, I'm sure. Uh, they actually said earlier they were having camera trouble, so... Yeah, that's probably going to happen. Oh yes, one other thing I want to mention. I have turned graphics down so that the frame rate for this video should be better. So if parts of Titanic randomly disappear through this video that are in the distance, that is why, because the graphics are currently set to automatic, and uh, yeah. I will also mention that I do have the Crew Game Pass active right now, so I can access areas like this that are not generally accessible to passengers on this ship. The expansion joint. And a lovely representation of it as well. You can see the rubber bit there, and the brass plates on either side. So, um, let's go inside. Let's actually have a look around the ship. Um, there is not a whole lot of third class accessible, but we can go to Scotland Road, so let's go down there. Let's do that first. Actually, wait, no, let's actually just explore first class, and I realize I did not give this room its proper due. So, the Grand Staircase. An absolutely... An absolutely beautiful room, in pretty much all ways. Got that beautiful dome at the top, and panning down, just a beautiful staircase. And you may notice, the ship is tilted slightly to port. And that is because, uh, this is representing the 14th of April 1912, so yesterday, there was a small coal fire going on in boiler room number 5, I believe. And um, the fire was on the starboard side of the ship, so in order to keep the fire from reigniting, the firemen shifted coal from one side of the ship to the other, and that gave her this list to one side. There is evidence to suggest, I believe it was presented initially by someone called Park Stevenson, that this list that we're seeing right here is actually what prevented Titanic from capsizing during her sinking. So, let's get one more view of the Grand Staircase, see if we can get that iconic view of it that we get. I believe it's about here here. Yes, there we go. Lovely. Just beautiful. Alright, now let's continue into the first class lounge. Oh, night's already falling, so I should probably hurry this along so that we can actually get to some more of the interior. So, let us go open the doors, which is a new feature actually. This wasn't here the first time I played it. Uh, you used to just walk through the doors. There is an option to turn that on, I assume for performance reasons. First class lounge. This is actually the best representation I think I've ever seen in a Roblox game. Um, the original Roblox Titanic from Virtual Valley Games did have this room, but not nearly to this level of detail. This is beautiful. And yes, a lot of the modeling here, a lot of the detail comes from the textures, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The textures... 2D textures are a good way to add life to something. And the mirror here doesn't work. But that's okay. Continuing aft, I actually don't think we can access the aft grand staircase. Let me just double check. Yep, we cannot. So, let's head back out to the forward grand staircase. You can see, actually, one thing that this game does do that can make it somewhat difficult, and I might actually have to see if I can bump the contrast up in editing, is when we are near a wall, or indeed inside the ship, it absolutely darkens the outside of the ship to the point that it becomes very difficult to see it. But when we are outside, it looks like this, nice and pretty, and fairly well lit as well. So, let's continue down the Grand Staircase, and if we go down to B Deck... Ah, yes, one more thing I want to mention. In here, we have accommodation. Yes. On the other side of the ship, we have accommodation. Indeed. And then back here as well, we've got accommodation. And the same on the other side as well. Doesn't look like any of the lifts are accessible for us to use, looks like they're all on C Deck, so let's get down there. I'm sure that bell that we just heard is nothing to worry about. So as we can see, no aft accommodation, or rather midships accommodation. There is no aft accommodation either. If we come out here, we can see the private promenade doors unfortunately will not open for us. That's okay. We've got the boarding doors here that lead into the grand staircase. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And if we go to the bow, 
we do have some of the forward accommodation. So let's go here. And if we go through here, we can see lots of accommodation, lots of doors on this ship. A whole lot of doors. And if we come outside, just a beautiful view all around. And there is a very bright and colorful person for 1912. You are not dressed appropriately for the time period, sir. So, let's head back into the ship now. So now let's continue down to Sea Deck. Oh yes, and these doors here also lead into accommodation. Anyway. Down to Sea Deck, a little bit more to see on Sea Deck, I believe. We've got accommodation on either side of the Grand Staircase, we've got accommodation forward, and no accommodation aft. That is a bit of a trend with this ship. We do also have an actual purser on this ship. This is the Enquiry office, and this is the purser's office. Hello, sir. Hello. And goodbye. So, let us continue down the stairs, and we get to the first class reception room. Let's enter this properly through the boarding doors in the hull right here. So, if we come through here, we could go through either the massive entrance here, or just these nice doors here, beautifully decorated with... I always thought this was meant to be black rat iron, but they've represented it here with gold, and actually Honor and Glory have been doing the same thing, so I wonder if there's any merit to this. I don't know. Anyway, continuing aft, we can see that, like with most games in this... in uh, Roblox, with most experiences rather, the first class dining room is unfortunately closed off, we cannot go in, that's a shame, but that's alright. We've got the painting here, and yes, D-Deck. So, let us now continue, and actually let's go through one of these corridors here, because there's something special to this ship that I would like to show you. So, as we come through here, plenty of accommodation, as you can see, lots and lots and lots of rooms. And if we come through here, we can see a staircase leading down to E-Deck, and look at this! We've got stuff going on. So, if we come through here, we've got the third class open space. This would be a cabin. I believe eight berths were in there. Oh, hello, sir. You just spawned in right in front of me, didn't you? All right, let's continue. Oh, no, another dead person. There's so many dead people on this ship. Anyway, continuing through here, just the third class open space. As you can see, if we come up here, then we have more open space for the third class. These are fenced off, so no dancing on top of them, as we saw in the film. Unfortunate, sad day for all, but that's okay. Continuing down here, we have E-Deck and Scotland Road. And down here, we've got F-Deck. Not a whole lot of F-Deck is represented, but what we do have is quite nice. And let's go ahead and close the watertight door. For no reason, I just think it might be fun. And let's go back up to E-Deck. There is more third class forward of that bulkhead, but... No reason to worry about that. So, let's come back in here, and let's go down another deck to F-Deck. And if we squeeze around here, really tight squeeze that, because down here we've got, well, water and the mail room. Let's get out of here before we start to drown. If we come around here, we have cabins. Yes, lots of cabins on this ship. And if we come around here, and we have another staircase to go down. Looks like this is unfortunately underwater, so there's not much that we can do or see down here. However, that would be the first class squash court. Anyway, let's go back upstairs, and let's see what else we can do. What was that noise? Anyway, as we continue out, we can see lots of first class accommodation here. And if we go to here, we have a door. So if we open that, I don't believe any of these doors work. I... Might be mistaken, there might be one or two that do, but most of them don't. Ah, we've got a lift on E-Deck. Excellent, we will make our escape in that later. But we do have lots of accommodation. In fact, actually, if we come down this one, this cabin right here would be Molly Brown's cabin. It's accessible in one of these experiences that I've played, but I forget which one, and it is obviously not this one, unfortunately. Anyway, continuing aft, what did that sign say? Watertight door deck plate. Interesting. Anyway, continuing on through here, we've got the staircase. Let's continue down to F-Deck anyway, and we can see... Oh no, it has been flooded! So in here we have the Turkish baths, and if we go through here... Well, we'll actually do that later, so I will explain that when we get to it. And we'll just have to dodge the water. If we come back here, we've got more accommodation! Lots of accommodation on this ship. Yes. Let's get out of here before our screen goes completely green. I would like you guys to be able to see, after all. So, let's come up here, 
and let's try to escape the water before it catches up with us. So let's actually take Scotland Road now, and let's go all the way aft to the second class section. Unfortunately, the third class sections, as you can see, are closed off, inaccessible, sad days for all, but that's okay. Here we have a watertight door breaking up Scotland Road, actually ending Scotland Road. So Scotland Road goes from here all the way to the forward part of the ship. Let's go ahead and close that door. And I'm sure that'll keep the water out and, we'll, we will, and we will be just fine. After all, this ship can't sink. This would be the reciprocating engine room through here, and if we come to these doors here, this would be the turbine engine room, or stairs leading down to the each respectively. And as we come through here, we get yet another watertight door. Now we are doubly safe and the water can never get to us. Coming through here, in fact, if we come in here, we've got potatoes! This is an entire room on the Titanic dedicated purely to storing potatoes. In fact, it's one of the largest rooms on the ship that's not a public space. So, continuing, this is... I believe this is actually a third-class entrance, and then in here we've got the second-class entrance, which is inaccessible, unfortunately, because this is the main second-class stairwell, and second-class in this game does not have access to the boat deck. So, now we come through here, and we can close this door as well. So we are triply safe from the water now. Unfortunately, we cannot go downstairs, they've blocked it off with a gate, and there is no way we could climb over that whatsoever. Porthole. Everything still looks normal. So, let's continue through here. Did I just see someone fall from up above? Well, that was interesting, but anyway. This is the aft second-class stairwell. Not as much of an entry into the ship, but that's okay. And if we continue down here, we get to second-class F-deck. Lots of cabin accommodation, and that's really about it. And here we are on D-deck. And the dining saloon, unfortunately inaccessible on this model. That's a shame, but anyway, let's go up even farther. And we get to C-Deck. Beautiful room. This door right here would lead to a corridor through which you could walk around on the promenade. Ah. Seems like we can just walk through this door. I wonder if that's the same for this one. I stand by the fact that... That's also strange. I stand by the fact that this door is in a very awkward place behind this mast. Seems not to be the best idea, but... You know what? It works as well. So, here we've got... A deck motor, I believe. I'm not actually sure what this would power, though. Maybe it's a generator, not a motor. And this would be cargo hatch 4 on the starboard side. Cargo hatch 4 on the port side is the same thing, and both of them go up to B deck, and that's the highest deck. I could be wrong about this, but I believe cargo hatches 1 and 4 were the highest on the ship, because they came up to B deck and the rest all came up to C. This is also cargo hatch 4. leads straight down into the cargo hatch cargo holds of the ship. So, as we come down here, this is third class passengers only. We're breaking all sorts of class barriers from first to class to second class and now into third class. So, let's go up to the poop deck. This is really the only third class ser or third class only area on the ship anyway. And yeah, quite nice. Lots of room to walk around, sort of, lots of cranes in the way as well and benches and air vents. Yes. So, we've also got the docking bridge right here. If we come up here, we've got notice. Oops. Notice. Passengers are not allowed on the docking bridge. Well, watch me. Here we go. And we've got a helm and two telemotors. Anyway. Let's get back up to boat deck. And unfortunately, I believe that Scotland Road is probably flooded near the Grand Staircase now. Even if it hasn't, we have closed all of the watertight doors on our way. So, there is only one way up to boat deck as far as I'm concerned, and that is this. We are going to climb the walls, like we're Spider-Man. There we go. Perfect. And we've got ladders here to make it more accessible to get up. Perfect. So, let's start setting up these lifeboats to get some passengers off. And it's a very... This is actually a really nice process, I think, to release the lifeboats, because you have to do a lot of things in sequence for it. As you can see, I will talk you through the next one, but for right now, I am just um, getting this lifeboat prepared so that we have one ready and that should get off the ship in time. I doubt we're going to get more than one or two off, unless there are people up front getting boats ready. Doesn't look like it, so probably not. So, it's actually a really involved process to get these boats ready, and it's it's pretty cool, actually. So, you got to first remove this little gate in front of the lifeboat, and... Uh, Yep, and then you cut the chains holding the lifeboat to the deck, preventing it from falling off. Then you've got to remove the tarp that they put over the lifeboat to prevent rain from getting in. And then you swing the lifeboat out. 
Obviously, in reality, that would be a much more complex and um, demanding process. And someone like me probably couldn't do it because you probably have to be in good shape to operate these davits, I would imagine. Although, if you're raising the lifeboat, then I think they had motors helping them do that. Because you could not handle the weight of a fully loaded lifeboat, even if you were in the best shape of your life. 70 people is quite a lot of people. So, let's get these four lifeboats ready, and that should be enough for everyone on this ship. It is, after all, a Roblox game, so more than 50 people cannot get in, which is fine. So let's just get these four lifeboats ready, and then we will run to the front and see what's going on. And if we can launch some explosives, because that might be fun. Okay, perfect. All four lifeboats are now ready. We can see that lifeboat swinging out. We can see this lifeboat getting lifted up. That lifeboat now gets lowered down to deck level. And then this lifeboat should get swung out. There we go. Perfect. One thing this game has that I don't think I've actually seen in any other Roblox game is these lifeboats are properly numbered. So this is 9, that's 11, then we've got 13 and 15. 13 and 15 are famous among the Titanic community because this lifeboat was lowered before 15, However, they were both actually lowered around at the same time, which ended up with 13 getting caught in the ship's condenser exhaust, which would be coming out just about, if I come forward, just about here, and it would push the bow of 13 back, and 13 would get stuck under 15, as 15 was also lowering. 15 was still in the air, though, so instead of hitting each other, the passengers nearly got crushed. Uh, they managed to cut the ropes on 13 and free it, and they pushed themselves away from the ship before they got crushed, and the condenser exhaust probably actually helped with pushing the lifeboat away. So, in the end, there was only one tragedy that night, but very nearly another one. This is... I'm actually not sure what this section is, but this would lead into a corridor through which you could access the engine room. In fact, it's not really even a corridor, it's just like a little uh, metal grating bit with staircases down. Oh, and you can see the ventilation covers are open. That's cute. So, continuing forward, let's see what we've got. Looking down the stairs, nothing yet. That's always good. And if we look over the bow... Excellent. Doesn't look like there's any water. Or is there? Nope, there definitely is. That would be the staircases and the well deck underwater, and it looks like actually the forecastle is as well. So, let's launch an explosive into the sky. Fire it off! Yes! Boom. Continuing aft, we've got... Let's actually access some of the cruise sections. We've got the wheelhouse in here, we've got this room, and we've got this little section here. We also have Captain Smith's sitting room and his bedroom, and we've got this door which leads out into a crew corridor, which I cannot open except from back here. So, through this door back here would be Captain Smith's private toilet. It is inaccessible on this model, but it is accessible in VVG's game, so if you want to have a look at it, it's in that. Coming aft from the wheelhouse, we've got more cabins! Each of these was assigned to an officer. I forget whose was whose, so I do apologize. I can't really tell you. However, there is another room that I know back here. And if we continue all the way aft and come through here, this is the Marconi room! So this would be the wireless room. This is where they sent the SOS and the CQDs, and these are the wireless telegraph keys. I thought the ship only had one. But I don't know for a fact. Through here would be the silent room, unfortunately inaccessible on this model, I think, I don't think I can open that door, it doesn't look like it. And in here is their bedroom! So, the silent room would be the room that Harold Ride was in, adjusting the levels of Titanic's radio till the very end. And by, until the very end, I actually mean until the very end. It was, they came out on deck just as the collapsibles were being thrown off the roof, which is quite late into the sinking, actually. Stupendous, all three lifeboats are now swinging out over the side of the ship. Although, do you know what? The ship's getting quite low, quite low down by the head. Maybe the ship can't sink after all. Ah, oh, the water's only on B deck though, so I'm sure we're fine. So, let's continue aft. And there was one more thing I wanted to have a look at before we go down. So, if we have a look in here, we've got the gymnasium with actual equipment this time. A uh, few experiences do have this room accessible. This is the only one, I believe, to have it completely furnished. Uh, this punching bag, which is lower down than I thought it would be, actually. And we've got the bicycles here, with this distance gauge thingy. So each bike would be tied to one of the thingies. I believe uh, these should both look the same. And yeah, they would both spin around and tell you how far that you'd traveled. 
Okay, Titanic's making noises in my ears. It's not nice. This is the rowing machine. You just sit down and you just act like you're rowing about. Probably good practice for what's about to happen to the Titanic. If we look at this, I assume this is like a... I don't, I don't know, 100%. I don't know what a lot of this equipment is. It's 1912 gym equipment, so... I don't know what most modern gym equipment it looks like, let alone 1912 stuff. So, continuing into the grand staircase again. Still looking quite pretty. And it does look like they've portrayed the dome as not having lights on at night, which I've seen debated. I actually don't know if it would have had lights on at night, at night or not. I don't really have an opinion either way on that, because I haven't seen enough evidence either way. But I do know that lights on the ship tended to turn off around, I believe it was 10 o'clock for first-class passengers, so there's a good chance that the dome would have been off when Titanic hit the iceberg, at least. Let's have a look what's going on up here. And, oh dear, it looks like maybe Titanic can't sink after all, so let's have a look. Yes. Definitely going down. But let's actually get a nice free cam shot. Right, anyway, let's see what we can do. Oh dear. We're starting to get sploosh effects. That can only mean one thing. Water is coming. Let's launch one last explosive into the sky. Fireworks! They're always fun. Yes. Alright, the wireless room has been abandoned. That's what I mean by literally the last second, by the way. The water's already up here, and the wireless room has just been abandoned. And we can already see water in the bridge as well. So, let's actually get that lifeboat ready, though, because I think we can probably push it off the roof at this point. So, if we jump up here... There we go. And we just want to remove the boat cover, and the launch process for these is quite nice as well. Because you remove the cover, and then you place the oars down to use them as ramps. And the oars are actually animated as well, so if we look now, you can see... Look at that. Actually placed as a ramp. And then you push the collapsible to the side, and then you shove it off the roof. I'm sure those oars are strong enough to hold a lifeboat. Let's just shove the boat down. Yep, seems to be working. Or maybe not. Anyway, let's get B down, shall we? I'm sure we have time. Remove the cover. Good. Place the oars. Good. Now we want to push the lifeboat. We could, dis we could discuss how strong a Roblox character is pushing an entire lifeboat like this. But let's not. And then as we push Collapsible B off the roof of the officer's quarters, it goes onto the deck. And does that. It's a little bit upside down. Also, it's a little bit underwater. I'm not sure if it's going to float. I've never launched it that late before. <laughs> These oars also snapped and are actually floating, which is interesting. Ah, that lifeboat's going under. That's a shame, we didn't get to use it, but that's okay. Let's go back to Collapsible A and maybe we have a chance at saving ourselves. Actually, no, let's stay on the ship. I'm sure that won't go wrong at all. Oh! That just happened. We're definitely running out of time. Let's have a look in the Grand Staircase and see what happens in there. What are you doing? You look like a real person. You shouldn't be in Roblox. Why do you look like this? Well, actually, you don't look like a real person. You look like an anime person. But you have, like, not Lego brick proportions. This is probably not a good place to stay. Oh, there it goes. The dome is gone! We gotta get out of here! And I'm stuck a little bit. Okay, I've gotta get out of the ship. <laughs> oh no, I'm dying. Oh no, I'm gonna die! What an end to the video! Okay, we're out, we're out, we're out. Here we go. Let's go up the ship. Up the deck, and we're out. A little bit cold, as you can see by the edges of our screen, but that's okay. I'm sure we'll be fine. Let's get down, and let's get up onto the poop deck. Here we go. Perfect. We're all incredible at balancing. Look at that. Look how much of the ship is out of the water as well. You can see the propellers down there. Quite a chilling sight, that. Obviously, Titanic would never have reached this high an angle in reality. It's pretty much physically impossible. It's just so much of the ship out of the water, the structure of the ship would never have been able to sustain such a high angle for so long. And she'd have snapped long before this.
You can see all the people on the deck running for their lives. I'm going to go a bit quiet now and just let you guys watch the sinking as it happens. Oops. I think I died. I definitely died. I don't have a cursor. <laughs> this is a problem. This is a major problem. I do not have a cursor. Alright, well, if I press F, then we can actually watch the ship sink, so let's just do that. Unfortunately, the ship is not loading in. Oh, there we go. Looks like the lights have gone out. And there it is. She breaks her back! Lots of sparks, lots of flame. The funnels topple. And it's all over for the Titanic. And there she goes, raising her stern way up out of the water, and then plunging. And just like that, she slips under the water, and as she disappears beneath the waves, she becomes a legend. Ship lost on her maiden voyage. And I'm not actually going to... I don't think we're actually going to see the ship disappear under the waves because the camera angle decided to do whatever it's doing right now. It's just spinning around in the blackness. Alright, and before we end the video, there was one last thing about this game I wanted to explore, and that is the exploration mode. You noticed it on the screen earlier. We are currently in that, which is why we've got to play exploration mode here instead of sinking. And I think it's time that we board the ship and have a look around. We are now on the Titanic during the day, and the sun is not going to set on us because it is time to explore. So, things that are different about this version. Well, for one, there's no iceberg ahead of us. You can explore Titanic to your heart's content for as many days as you like, and there are no consequences. Another thing to note, the sun never sets, so it is always day, eternally day. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. So, there isn't a whole lot of the ship that we haven't explored yet. Oh yes, doors also do not work. The lifeboats obviously don't work, because why would they? There is no need for them. And coming down here, we can actually have a look at what there is. So, going through here, again, hallway. That's about it. And in here, we've got the plunge bath, or the swimming pool. And you can see the showers here. I mentioned these in a couple older videos. They're basically iron bars, and they look like a torture device, but they're actually, like, sounds quite fun to use them, actually, because the water comes at you from all directions. It sounds like a good shower. Um, I think that's actually about it. I don't think there's a whole lot more that is explorable on this model. If we come through here, there is a bit of F deck that we can look at, and I believe we can also get down to G deck. So, if we come through here, obviously, yes, we've got the open space up here. That's where we're coming from, and if we come down here, we came off Scotland Road. And coming down here, we've got F deck. Yep, cargo hatch, few corridors, lots of cabin accommodation. And a watertight door or two. And that's really it through here. Going through here, we've got stairs. And these stairs lead down to G deck. Cabin accommodation. And that's it. There's a lot of cabin accommodation in third class, and that tends to be the only thing that we have in third class. So, coming down here, we've got more third class cabin accommodation. Lots and lots and lots of third class cabin accommodation on G deck. I'm lost. Where am I going? Okay, let's go through here. Oh, and we can go back here as well. To even more cabin accommodation! So many cabins on this ship. 
And that, and with that, that's actually the lowest and the last thing that we have to explore on this ship. We cannot get to oil up deck, we cannot get to tank top deck, which means that we cannot explore the boiler rooms, and we cannot explore the engine rooms. Sad days, but that is to be expected. So, let's get back up to the bridge, and we will end the video with a nice shot of the ship. Alright, so with that, that's going to be me for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick look at Titanic SOS, running around the ship, surviving a sinking, or actually dying in a sinking, we did not survive, and then just exploring the ship after the fact, having a look at what we didn't get a chance to look at while the ship was going down. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, and subscribe, it means the world. If you have already subscribed, it means the world to me. Thank you so much, you're one of my favorites, I love you. And uh, yeah, that's going to be me, so thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Ah yes, and... The tutorial is coming tomorrow, so if you are waiting for that, that is coming tomorrow. So, hopefully you're excited for that. I know I'm actually quite excited to record it, and uh, yeah. So, that all being said, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye!